Welcome to the World Chess Championship 2014. Magnus Carlsen, defending world champion from Norway, rated 2863, highest rating ever in the history of chess. Looking to defend his title. Magnus won it last year from former world champion Vishyanan, seen here, ex world champion from India. But she's looking for revenge. It's going to be a great, great match. Stay tuned for the games. Hi, folks. John Cordisco back again. Round 7 of the World Chess Championship 2014. This is a hell of a game. I warn you now, it's going to be a long game. I'm going to skip a lot of the end, but I think this is a game where Magnus tried to press Vishyanand and tax him mentally and physically. And I'll tell you the truth, Vishy came through with flying colors. Anyway, it doesn't determine who wins, but at the end of the video, there's going to be a, a, a video of the press conference for this game. So after this game, uh, don't cut off the video. Stay tuned for that. Let's get to it. Magnus Carlsen is white. Vichy Anand is black. It's going to be a Berlin, but don't roll your eyes. It's kind of interesting. Knight, castles, pawn, d4, knight. Bishop takes, D takes. We've seen this part a million times. Knight F5, Queen takes, King takes, H3. Okay. Now we're off. Interesting to say the least. Typical Berlin. You've all seen it a million times. Nigel Short made a comment once. We talked to Vladimir Kramnik, who really popularized this and actually managed to beat Gary Kasparov in the World Championship with a Berlin. His idea was to make it so no one plays e4 anymore for white. <laughs> and I'll tell you, he's damn near succeeded. King has to come over. It's cost him a tempo. Knight comes out. h5. Bishop. Typical stuff. This is all prep. Rook a to d1. Bishop. Knight to g5. Hitting the bishop. You have to leave it. G3. It stops the pawn. It stops the pawn from going to H4. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. Rook G6. You want to put the rook back. It's no point. H4. Just to reinforce that. Bishop. F6. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. Bishop F4. I'm going a little quicker than normal. One, we've all seen the Berlin a million times. And two, is, this is a long game. Okay. What to do, what to do. It's like the bishop's bearing down the pawn. But we all know. Knight take h4 is the move. Pawn can't take, of course. Because of here. F3. This is going to be a very, very unique end game coming up here towards the end. One I haven't seen in a championship game before. Rook d8. King comes up to guard the f3 pawn. Interesting though. Rook takes. Now, knight takes is the better move. I really don't know why. Rook takes is number two, but not by much. But of course, this is all. These guys all know this prep. I mean, they're still in their uh, theory. Knight to f5. Rook to h1. Bishop takes. Rook takes. Bishop e6. Bishop just comes back. There's really no point in pushing the b pawn after b takes a2 because the bishop can't be trapped. The knight would have to go here for white. And of course. That square is guarded, or would be guarded. G4. Knight to D6. Rook to H7. Now, I've got my Fritz 13 computer on off screen. In every single move, there is not an alternative move for the move they made on the board. This is all theory, believe it or not. And in fact, someone even mentioned... Fishy might have saw this position up another 10 moves. This is how much these guys have this Berlin and other openings down. Amazing stuff. Knight f7. 
That's more more to block off the rook. From here anyway. Knight e3. King d8. Now, I haven't mentioned the score up until now, but it's barely an advantage for white. 0 0.08. We'll just call it even. It's the same. Knight f5. C5. Fishy star to get the pawns on the queen. Excuse me. King side rolling. Nope, that is the queen side. Excuse me. Knight g3. Going to try to reroute that knight, I think. Knight e5. What to do? What to do? Computer likes bishop takes c5. And a very close second is rook to h8. And that's what Magnus did. Rook comes back. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Rook to h5. Now, this is the part that I think is worth mentioning a lot about. We all remember from the last game, round 6, how Vichy had Magnus. Magnus had a huge blunder, and Vichy missed it. He's disappointed that he missed it, but he also knows that he had Magnus, and Magnus screwed up. And his confidence here in this game is fairly high. He took 20 minutes on this move. Computer suggests rook to f8. Bishop f7, that kind of thing. Now stop the video now and see if you can guess what move Vichy had. Right now it's it's a minute advantage for white, we'll call it even. He did none of those things. He played bishop takes g4. Now the score jumps up a point and a half, a point and a quarter now for white. And after f takes. Like rook f8, the king e3, bishop d5 was a computer selection. But after bishop takes, pawn takes, rook takes. Three pawns for a piece. Well, we'll say two pawns for a piece because the e5 pawn is going to go for black soon. Vichy took over 20 minutes here, and we're on move 32. Rook takes, and I say this is, re I'm really encouraged by this for one simple reason. Vichy didn't play it safe like he did last year when he lost his championship to Magnus. He had a heartbreaking loss in round six where he had the game won and missed it. He didn't do what he did last year. He didn't fall back on his laurels. He went for it. And I'll tell you what, that might be the thing that keeps him in this match. Now we're going to go on forever here. B6. It's good. Those pawns have to be good and solid. Now the pawns are on the same side. Vichy's looking to draw. He, he was in a really crappy position before, and he just went for it. Knight d4, rook, king e2. And you have to remember, if you guys ever get an ending like this, and you're black, in this case, so the four pawns and the rook against the knight, two pawns and a rook, you cannot trade rooks under any circumstances. You have to have that piece. Remember that. B3, king d7. King's going to be very important. King c6. Knight comes over. Just keeping the king out. A6. And the one reason why you should keep the rook if you're black is because it's your only piece. But even if you had another one, it's good to have a piece to make off moves with. When you're down a king and pawns, you've got to have another piece to make the off move with. So you don't get zuzwang. Rook d4. Rook checks. King c1. You're going to see that rook harass, harasses the crap out of the white king. Rook. King. Rook. Knight. I'm just going to go through these fairly quickly. They're just maneuvering around. Rook h6. It's still a point and a half advantage for white. Magnus has got to figure this out. We're on move 43. We're past the time control. Rook. He's got to coordinate that rook and knight together. And Vichy's not going to let him. Rook d6. King b7. King c3. Rook h4. Stopping the king from getting in. King b2. Rook. Knight. Rook d2. Now he's got to move the knight. Rook f2. Hit the knight again. Now he can't move the rook too far. King c3. Rook f4. Vichy knows what he's doing here. Knight e4. Rook h4. Knight comes back. I'm trying to reroute him again. Rook. Rook. 
Rook comes back. And they keep going. Rook h3. King d2. Now he's going to try the other way. Just checks him again. Now he's offering a trade of rooks, which he cannot take, of course. Rook c4. Finally had a pawn move. Rook h3. Forcing the king to tie down to the knight. King's over. Rook. Knight moves. Rook h5. Rook. Rook. Knight. Here he goes. Rerouting the other way again. I think he's trying to get in to from d1 to here. b5. Finally a pawn move. Gonna get a pawn break here. Of course, white can't take. Knight c3. C6. Excellent. Still a point and a half advantage. Now, that's the tricky part with the computer. It says you're way ahead, but try to win it. Knight to e4. Rook h5. Just backs off the rook. Keeps it out of any dangers of any forks or any nonsense from the, from the knight on the rook. Knight f6. Rook g5. Just keeping the rook effective and keeping it far enough away from the knight where it can't get any problems. Rook checks. King comes up. Knight checks. Computer like knight to e4. And after rook h5, rook e6. After knight checks, king comes up. Vichy had this all worked out. Rook e4. Rook checks. King c1. Rook checks. Now what Vichy's doing now is he's keeping the king away from the queen side. Finally takes. Rook takes. What Vichy's accomplished was, look how far away now this king is from in this area in here. And that's exactly what he wanted to do with that rook. Rook g3, hitting the pawn. Knight takes. King comes over. Rook has to move. A5. King f2. Rook over. Rook c1. King comes up. That pawn's going to go. King e2. Rook c3. Can't trade now. Now it's the reverse now. Knight to d3 check. If rook had taken... King takes king e3, king b4, and it's basically an even game. After knight checks, king takes rook a1, king c4, knight f2, has to move the knight, king b5, rook, and I won't go through the rest here. I'll just go through it quickly. Basically, from move 75 or so, around move 80, it was dead drawn. It's dead drawn now. I'm just going to go through the last few moves here. You're going to see they go through. And Meg just plays it out around move 85, and he's still going. I think he's trying to wear Vichy down, but he didn't wear him down this time, mentally or physically. Vichy looked great at the press conference. He didn't look dejected. He didn't look tired. It's a different Vichy than last year, way different. Yesterday's game, round six proved it. Knight e4, rook checks, king d3. I'm just going to go through the moves here for a while. And they get down to a rook against rook and knight. Fishy loses the c pawn. You're going to see it coming here. But he had it all figured out. They went for a while. Just keep going. Just couldn't do it. In fact, uh, right now, it shows uh, less than a third of a pawn advantage for white. We'll just go through the rest. This is like Fisher. He's just going down to Bear Kings. Finally, he had enough. Magnus said that's enough. He won Rook C1, Vichy took, and Knight took. And that draws by material. I thought it was a hell of a game. I give Vichy a lot of credit. One, for sacrificing the piece for two pawns. And two, uh, having the courage to do it, I should say. And two, having the stamina. Because he knew it was going to be a long, torturous endgame. And I think they, one of the questions basically was, you know, 
it was a non-surprise or upset that you played on. And, and basically, uh, Carlson said, well, when he had that endgame, he knew it was going to be torturous all the way to the end. So he decided that's what he wanted. I thought it was a hell of a game by both players. And I think Anand has is, is, is actually turned the corner. He's down by one point, but I'll tell you the truth. He's way better off, not just in score, but I think mentally and physically than he was last year. So hats off to both. Great game, round seven. Just duking it out. Like a couple of guys in a room, you know, and just duking it out. Anyway, folks, that ends round seven in the World Chess Championship 2014. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank all my new subscribers. Thank you very much. I've got over 200 now. I never thought a little guy like me would have that many subscribers. Thank you very much. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. And as I always say, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. And watch the press conference at the end of the video. Take care. So we are ready to start the press conference. The game seven finished in a draw. And uh, while you were playing this game, the whole world, chess world, was discussing if Vishwanathan Anand uh, knew uh, this uh, line till the end game when the rook was against rook and knight. So, uh, Vish, can you please answer this question? No, I didn't know it that far. <laughs> so maybe then till which moment you knew it and what can you say about this game? Um, well, it's a topical line, which has been uh, floating around recently. A um, lot of games in the Grand Prix and so on. And uh, there was this game, Giri Rajabov. Me, for instance. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not. Well, we went into this um, peace sack and reached this end game. But Which initially I wasn't, um, I couldn't see, maybe I should start with rook c4 or something. Ah, but then rook c4, or rook c3, c3 and three, rook e4. C3. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it was a bit annoying that n neither rook c4 nor rook b4 works, so I have to play b6. But where are you obl obliged to go for this end game? Yeah. I mean, this 95 move, I don't know. it's, I think, one of the critical moments because you, so you are thinking for 30 minutes or something mm -hmm. like this. Can you speak more about this particular moment? Well, it was, it was a choice whether to go for this or... Um, but I, um, I wasn't sure the position was so nice otherwise, so I decided to go for this. Yeah. Um, Magnus, what can you say about this moment as well? Uh, this knight g3, was it something... You prepared? Yeah, it's it's uh, an interesting position, um, and um, yeah, knight a knight e five is not a bad way to try and bail out. If I take immediately, then rook h five. Um, I think you can get some counterplay with bishop a two and rook b six. So, I I have to admit that initially I I was convinced that there should be uh, a way to to win this ending. Um, but I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't see how um, to really make progress without playing c4. Uh, basically, I want, I need to get the knight to d5 and the rook to the seventh rank, which uh, is a plan that can't easily be stopped. But he can get uh, with the pawn on c4, but he can get counterplay. And when he gets b5, I can put the knight on d3 instead, the king on c3, and so on. But I don't know. I didn't see how to make progress then. So I thought, yeah, rook e4. I think here there are probably several ways to make a, a draw. But um, th there were some some sort of traps, like for instance, king b4 is not very good because it takes, and rook e8, and his king is in some trouble. Um, and also, uh, also rook g7 was interesting, and then knight takes and king b4, king a4, c5, um, and at least the game goes on. But yeah, but after what he did, I didn't see anything at all. So. But may maybe there, maybe there. Um, 
it's just a draft or the piece suck, but it seemed to me that should be resources and probably I, I didn't find all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, did you also consider not to sacrifice the piece, uh, question to Vishwantan Manant, uh, but to go for the Sruk endgame, the Sruk F8 uh, instead of Bishop G4, I think? As I think yeah, but I thought I his connected pass pawns are yeah. quite uh, fast, King E3 King e and... Did you consider it as lost for black or? I think it, I think it I considered lost. it, but yeah. <laughs> um, I was not uh, I was not very happy with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It seems to me my pawns are slower. So I it's mean, like uh, of course, with the computer we can check this, but yeah. it seems to me my pawns are simply slower. Yeah, I think if if there is a path to and draw here, it's very very narrow. So practically, uh, Bishop G4 is uh, is the best choice. Yeah. And also, uh, when uh, Magnus played c4, you quite quickly choose this plan with uh, uh, b5, uh, king b6. So, like you were prepared uh, that this setup you, to use this setup in case if he plays c4. Well, the thing is, somehow uh, with my rook, I was able to keep um, uh, stopping his knight coming to d5. But now I understood that I could no longer wait, and. Um, then black gets this thing with c6, b5, and the king coming to a5. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think I can sit and wait, so I have to do this. Yeah, I, I, me too. I, I think if the knight gets to d5, then. then I mean, there are some nice yeah. uh, tricks. For instance, here. For instance, rook f5. Yeah, rook f5 is bad. Because, because he goes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then this knight e5. And if I go check. Then even king d1 works because the knight is coming back to d3. So that's why I have to play this exact move. But with one or two finesses, I thought black held and I didn't see any obvious way for him to win. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, do we have questions to players? Yes. Uh, Magnus, are you happy with the draw or was, was this a missed opportunity for you? Um. I think uh, draw draw is okay. Um, if if I missed something, I don't know exactly where it w it was uh, a promising position, but he he dug in and defended really well. So uh, I I don't I don't know where I could have uh, could have won. Yeah. Two, Mr. Roman, uh, how frustrating is it to be pressured like this for hours? Um, well, not very if you get the draw. Uh, it would be much more frustrating, of course, if you defend for a long time and don't save it. But um, um, I thought today I defended quite well, especially rook g5. I was very happy when I saw it and things like that. Um, but obviously, it uh, wasn't really what um, you enjoy, but um, well, it's part of the territory, I think. What does draw do to your confidence in the games to follow? Nothing. We just keep playing. And to Mr. Anand, um, how difficult was it to defend yourself uh, in this game? Um, well, once I went for the peace sack, then it's um, it's straightforward and it's tough because at every moment you have to choose some um, specific setup. You can't just uh, keep blundering back and forth, but you have to choose some very specific setup and stick to it. Um, but the good thing is once I would settle on a setup, I would get about 10 moves apiece in quiet till the next decision came along. So it was a tough ending, for sure. Question is for Vishin. Regarding this end game arising after bishop takes g4, did you ever analyze this before? I mean, at home or here in Sochi or at your training camp, or this, this end game or a similar one? Uh, I mean, if you're asking if I was, um, if I knew the exact mechanism, no, I had to f uh, work it out at the board. But um, uh, I have seen similar end games. But and it's not like Mag I could remember some specific conclusion. For Magnus, your normal approach is to get out of the theory as soon as possible. Today you did just the opposite. Can you elaborate why? Um, well, um, 
seemed like a, a decent choice today, especially since I'm a pawn, uh, not a pawn, but a point up in the standings. Uh, and um, well, as, as you could see from the game, there there isn't a whole lot of risk for White in in this line. And once in a while, you manage to get some pressure. Actually, during this famous press conference uh, Giri against Rajab of this game, they said that now it's out of trend if you don't uh, play Berlin Wall. So did you think about this, that it's like must to play opening for the players on a high level? I think a lot of o other openings have been seen in this match. And I, I don't follow trends set by Giri and Rajab of in general. So. <laughs> uh, to, to Magnus. Uh, did you ever consider settling for a draw earlier in this game? Well, I don't know. Um, there certainly were mo moments where I could have settled for a draw, but in general there there is no harm in playing on. So. Uh, to both of you, how will an exhausting game like this uh, affect tomorrow's game? I guess we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, it's, uh, but it, it's, it's part of the game. We're we're used to playing long games and then playing the day after. So um, it's uh, it's tough, but it's um, it's the way it is. Was it more difficult actually to play today this long game or to play yesterday's basketball game, which also lasted three hours, I believe? Chess is in general more difficult than most other things. So, вопрос Анду. Благодаря Твиттеру Карлсона мы узнаем иногда кое-что из того, как Магнус проводит выходной день. А вы не хотите публиковать фотографии во время матча или информацию какую-то? The question is to uh, Vishanand. Uh, thanks to the Twitter of Magnus Carlson, we learn what's going on during the three days here, and we learn some information. So, did you did you think to do the same? Did you think to publish some information on your tweet, Twitter? No, so far we haven't. Uh... Okay, Mr. Anand, on the 70th move, you took on C4, uh, and people were impressed, it seemed, uh, online. Uh, how do you evaluate your, your own move? Um, well, B takes C4 is very accurate. Um, because, uh, as Magnus showed, the line where the rook gets to B8, it's also very tough for him to win, because he, the knight is defending the pawn, it's a little bit loose. But uh, this one, I think, really clinches it. And I have to wait to, I have to drag this king to e1 and only then make this move. And um, I thought it was uh, precise. How hard was it to spot? Well, you're, you're really dying to play king b4. But the problem is here, black doesn't get what he wants, uh, which is his king gets dragged back if I go king b4. And once you know that, uh, I mean, bc4 is not a move you want to make. Um, and if the king is closer to the queen side, I cannot do it, which is why I have to keep checking. But um, once you see the idea of the king coming, and this one resolves it, so it wasn't too difficult to see. Um, and on, uh, apparently, you almost broke the world championship uh, record for a number of moves made. Um, how exhausted are you now? Um, not terribly. I mean, um, obviously, it was a very long game, but. Um, the last hour maybe was superfluous, so it wasn't so bad. Will this affect how much time you get uh, to prepare tomorrow's game? A little bit, yes. Was that your plan, Magnus, to drag out the game so that Anand wouldn't have enough time to pre prepare for tomorrow? Not particularly. Um, again, there, there is always a very slight chance of um, something happening, and um, I thought basically when he went for, for this um, ending with Rook and um, with Rook and Knight against um, and four pawns against Rook, Rook and Knight again and then two pawns against uh, Rook and four pawns I thought he already signed up for, for suffering so uh, didn't make that much difference. Uh, 
last question. Um, Anand, were you at all annoyed with Magnus dragging out the draw? Um, no, not particularly. A little bit? <laughs> no. Uh, this question is for Grandmaster Anand. Now, what made you decide to switch from passive to active defense? Was there a particular line, or you decided it was just time to go for it? Uh, After the piece sacrificed? Um, well, once he plays c4, I couldn't see how I could stop knight d5 and rook e7. I mean, maybe I can do it with my king, with a rook on h7 and a king on uh, d6, stop him landing on. Um, And in general, well, b5, there's no way back. Once you've done it, then you've bro broken the thing. But I couldn't see how uh, white would break through. So essentially, um, I felt that at a certain moment, I would have this counterplay with the king coming to b4. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, question. I mean, it wasn't. Um, it, well, it's just I felt it was the only way at this stage. Do we have other questions? Um, I don't see. Okay. Thank you very much for attending this press conference.